All right. First podcast in the new office. We bring in President and General Manager Todd Donovan. Uh, first off, we got to start with the new office, right? New, new little podcast space. I don't know if this is how it's going to be long term, but what a great, I mean, this is basically our first full day in the office for people. Not, not even the first full day. With a team store downstairs, how fired up for you for this, the new day? Uh, so exciting. I mean, I think uh, for everybody, for the club, um, for a lot of reasons, this is a really great thing. I think the fact that we had a, we had a great home in Midtown, but now moving downtown, uh, we're across the street from the rail yards. We're, you know, in the middle of Doco, in the heart of everything. Um, it's not unintentional. And I think uh, the office space is fantastic. The building has been tremendous to us uh, at Brennan Properties. And I think we... Um, you know, we're excited about the merch store, having a physical location again, which we had, you know, at, at our old Broadway office. Uh, there was a, a feel about that, a character that that brought to the office and I think to our merch line, which has always been incredible. Uh, we get to have that back and we'll have a ton of foot traffic here right. um, and it's going to be fantastic. A ton of driving traffic. The people get off on J Street, driving down to wherever they're going, um, which is exciting. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm fired up now being in and it's just it's it's amazing. Um, I want to uh, quickly jump in. Obviously, we're just past the halfway point, so it seemed like a good time to bring you in, plus the new office. Um, plus all the other guests bailed. So yeah, that was kind of let's a- make sure we get that in. Yeah, <laughs> they did. They did. They did. Um, tough, uh, tough run of results re- recently, especially at home. But overall, you're still in second place. Big game on, on Sunday against Oakland. Tied for second. We got a couple games in hand with them. Where do you kind of – uh, address where do you feel like the team is at currently uh, at this point in time? Yeah, I mean it, it's been a it's been a you know I, I guess a, a different kind of a start. I think we started the season record unbeaten thirteen games yeah. uh, between the Open Cup and uh, league, so that that's fantastic, right? Um, you know, and we're just a difficult team to beat in general. I think three losses and um, you know talking probably 20, 21 games at this point. So that's a good starting point, good foundation. We've struggled to find the net recently. Um, our home form hasn't been what it needs to be. So those are things we're talking about, trying to get a hold of. But listen, we went to the quarterfinals of the Open Cup for just a second time in club history. Um, we gave Seattle everything they wanted uh, and more and did ourselves proud. You know, That's on, on that front, but then also on the league front, uh, we're right in striking position of New Mexico, um, you know, and it's a good test for our guys. We've literally been in first place for the last year and a half, and now we find ourselves, um, you know, in a little bit of a, a bumpy form. And so now it's time to pull out of that gut check time and, and get guys to step up and make plays and get leaders to lead. But it's not like it's time where you guys are you now thinking like, okay, now we need to we need to regroup, rethink everything. It's just it's really just more of focus on the things that we do better, trying to just get out of that little funk that we've been in, and we've. We've seen these kind of little spells in the years past where you kind of, you know, it's a long season. You're, there's no way, I mean, unless you're having an unreal year completely throughout. And But you have these spells just in, in seasons. This is not, I want to say a normal thing, but it's it's something that does happen for every level of team. Yeah, it's, there's ups and downs in every season, no question. Some downs are longer than others. Some ups are longer than others. It just you, you go through these. So we're trying to have the guys be present, have them focus on the next game at hand, which is Oakland away on national TV. What a great opportunity, you know, to really showcase what we're doing. Our road form has been fantastic. We got two points per game uh, on the road, and that's that's a great standard. That's the gold standard by any measure uh, for your whole season. Yeah. But to do that on the road has been um really impressive so we're looking forward to this game it's gonna be a fun one obviously a lot of fans going to we'll be going to oakland this weekend uh, which is exciting we got the bus trip plan which is going to be super fun i wanted to mention and, and ask you about the open cup match against uh seattle uh just a great although despite the loss a great showing great match great energy i mean i just feel yeah. like even though it was a loss and we got knocked out it was still such an incredible night um on and off the pitch no, anyone who was there felt how great of a experience that was, how great of a game. It was an excellent soccer game. Yeah. You know, you looked at it back and back and forth, trading blows. Uh, the response we had coming straight out of uh, halftime where we, we, you know, we went down 2-0. You can't do that against MLS teams. That's just not a, a good recipe. It's not a good recipe for anyone, um, you know, but we are, the goals we gave up were a little bit soft. And 
they punished us for them. And, you know, we, uh, you can't do that against those types of teams. But the character we showed coming back, seeing Sebastian score, he's now played, for those keeping track, he's played against three MLS teams, um, Colorado Rapids last two, year. Two last year. San Jose Earthquakes this One, year. Yeah, so he scored in all of them. And yeah. Seattle Center. He scored four goals in three games against MLS opposition. Um, in three games, he's, you know, he came in very late uh, against the Earthquakes. So that shows his quality, his standard, and uh, we're looking forward to getting him healthy and getting him more involved uh, with our attack. I know you're so well tied in with the with MLS just playing in MLS, you know, like what it, we saw Seattle really give us props and give Sacramento props fans across the board following that game. What does that give you as a sense of a sense of pride? For yeah, Sacramento? special. I think Sacramento showed out again. And when you see it, um, it's easy to forget. But when we have moments like this, the city steps up, our fans step up, the team steps up. Um, and, and you felt that, you know, the other night and uh, walking off the field, several other players, you know, pulled pulled us aside and said, hey, this is uh this is a top level environment. This is as good as any environment we're in. So that was a big compliment. Uh, I think they were able to see that and feel that. And they had to, uh, you know, play their strongest team the entire way yeah. because they knew that anything else um, wasn't going to get it done. So that was a big compliment, I think, to the club, uh, to the city and, and really to, to everyone involved. It, um, it now bodes the question of when with, you know, the Open Cup news this last year, MLS Hold out for a bit. Like, what do you think following this year? What do you think might be the future of, of Open Cup with in terms of MLS teams? Well, I can tell you what I hope. I mean, I, we love this tournament. I love this tournament. Uh, my favorite soccer mem- memory comes from this tournament. Uh, back when I was in college and I got mm. to see the, oh, yeah. the LA Galaxy and San Jose Earthquakes play um, at Negoesco Field in San Francisco in a small venue. Um, and it was everything I wanted to be part of. And so those are the kind of moments that you can have in the Open Cup. Um, some of the Seattle fans said the same thing coming to Sacramento. It's special Mm -hmm. and it gives an opportunity that's very unique and it really brings the soccer landscape of this country, which is growing incredibly fast, incredibly well. Um, it gives it a chance to, to flourish and to thrive. And I think, um, you know, for me, whatever the tournament looks like in the future, um, it's, it's going to be great and it's going to be magical because that's, that's what this tournament is about. Well, and I, I will mention multiple, a lot of Seattle fans travel. I wouldn't say a lot, a good amount. Um, every one of them, super great people, always very complimentary. Um, yeah. from what I, what I recognized, um, speaking of like growth of the game, we got to, us got to get, do a little better in Copa America. So hopefully we'll do better in the Olympics, but we don't have to, we don't have to go into yeah. that. It's my own frustration. Sorry. It's my own frustration. It's coming through. Okay. Um, I want to get back to on the pitch. Um, we, we've had some injuries, obviously, Roro going down, Russell going down. And since then, it's been kind of been that's that's kind of been a change. You got you bring in Portillo, right? So it's it's almost been like trying to figure out what to do with some of those guys. Russell hopefully coming back soon. What is him coming back kind of does that re-energize the lineup? I know he holds everybody and himself to such a high standard. Does that yeah. give you confidence for how he can just spring in and, and make a huge difference? Well, Russell's a, an all-league player for us, and losing him, um, losing Roro, that, that's going to affect you. I think it's given other guys a chance to step up. We've really mm-hmm. seen Christian Pirano thrive, um, which has been awesome. You know, But Russell uh, is a special player, a special teammate. I think he, he drives the team. He's got a motivation, an energy, a passion. Um, that's infectious and it pushes people around him. So it's going to be great to have him back. He's training again, um, you know, and hopefully we can keep ramping him up to, to get him back, uh, back in the lineup. Cause he's a, he's a big piece for us. And then Kieran Phillips brought over in the loan from Huddersfield town, Kevin Nagel's team in, in England. Um, what were, what take us a little behind the scenes on what that process was like. Um, cause obviously, um, he came in and made a huge splash almost immediately. Yeah, this was what Kevin envisioned when he yeah. bought, you know, Huddersfield is that there were synergies between the two clubs. And this was the first opportunity to do that, um, you know, and it was a moment where we felt like we needed a little bit more uh, attacking oomph. And, you know, talking to Huddersfield, talking to Mark Cartwright, Jake, Jake Edwards, uh, this was a player that stood out to them of, hey, you know, Kieran's a player that, that, that we believe in, we like, and he just needs some more games. He's been out injured. He's had some, some issues with that. And so let's get him, let's get him over there, uh, and see how it goes. And like you said, first game out, you know, he's, uh, I think, you know, first game he, he really made an impact in. he scored two goals, two goals yeah. and just did fantastic for us. So he's, he's got a different gear, a different level. You saw that against the earthquakes, um, and what he brought in that game. And, um, you know, he's, he's somebody who we're, we're very happy that we have. Had a Huddersfield Town fan 
travel last weekend, come to the game, was their captain of the match. I uh, was talking to him ahead of time. He was like, he's like almost not, not, he wasn't only here to see Kieran, but he was very excited to see, to see Kieran, which I thought was really cool. Another, another reason why, what Kevin Nagel, I'm sure was excited about. Uh, yep. I want to dive in a little more on the Portillo signing. Uh, we kind of touched on it a second ago. So um, Roro goes down. It feels like, okay, we need, need some help in the midfield um, because he was such a good creator. So far, he's helping us a lot on set pieces. We haven't got on the ends of those, but it seems like he's it's still taking. I mean, it's got to be tough coming in mid season. We saw Pirano try and do it last year. Yeah, really didn't quite have the impact. But with a little more time for Portillo than Pirano had last year, um, well, how do you foresee him kind of really integrating him more? Obviously, he was cup tight against against which. Sucked yeah, Justin. Seattle, I mean, but. the good part for Justin is he wasn't coming from out of country like Christian was. Right. He was coming in fit. He'd been playing. So he didn't miss a beat. Yeah. It was really just about getting him here and getting him settled, which, we, which we've which we done. And he's a great professional. He's a leader. He's a guy on the field who takes charge and can kind of dictate play. And no question, we saw him filling a lot of Roro shoes in terms of uh, being able to boss the game a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a guy who can do that, who can make uh, good, good passes forward, can keep the ball, uh, and can kind of dictate the rhythm of the game for the team. So all those things uh, he's done already, and he's only going to get better as, as he continues to ramp up. Well, getting acclimated too, I imagine. It's you're coming in midseason. I thought we had him on last week. Was that last? Something like that. Was it, I think it was last week. Uh, my memory is terrible. But, and he was talking about what that's like to try and come in midseason and learn from yeah. what to – and I, I imagine that's got to be tough in any environment. Um, it seems like he's starting to get more and more comfortable, getting more and more confident. Um, and and also, not only that, he's – a huge asset on the defensive side of the ball too. Um, and obviously that's what I want to lead into next is defensively, despite the fact that it hasn't been a great stretch um, in terms of scoring defensively, the team's been unbelievable. Um, Vidiello has been unbelievable. Nine clean sheets. The second, uh, second team has seven least number of goals conceded 13 Miami, which is on the opposite side. The worst concede has 45 uh, continues to be a pillar for this team. Um, I'm sure that's something you guys hold very high of how good not only Vidiello, but the back line has been. What what can you say about about those group of guys continuing? Not, and it's not even the same three guys. We've seen Shane Wheat come in for Connor Donovan. There's just so many different pieces that has come and been successful on that back line. Yeah, huge. I mean, th- that's been the pillar and the foundation that we've built off of. Uh, again, big reason why we're a tough team to beat is you, when you don't get scored on. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to lose a lot of games. So, um, you know, those guys have been fantastic. It's been a great challenge uh, for them, too. There's a lot of competition within their spots. You've got five, you know, outstanding center backs when you talk about uh, yeah, our Chibi group too, and, yeah. and you throw Chibi in because he's been tremendous. And you're going to start seeing uh, Chibi as well because he's, he's electric. The games he's come in, uh, he's made a difference. And he jumped in and in, in, in MLS, yeah. you know, in, in the Quakes and, and got some good time. And um, has no fear, and he's he's got such a bright future, and, and we think even a bright present. So we're, we're going to see more of Chibi. Um, and then Danny, you know, I don't know what to say. He, the game, uh, I'm trying to remember which game it was, where the crowd's chanting his name. If that was Hartford. Um, I think so. I think it was, it was the, the Hartford It was game. the 1-0 win. And he I was... think that's Hartford, yeah. he. I mean, I've never seen that. I've never seen uh, a performance like that uh, that was so impactful from a goalkeeper. And he just did it over and over, and it, he was almost inside their head. Um, and, he, and he's carried that form over. Mm-hmm. So k- big kudos to him. He's been tremendous for us uh, and has really saved our bacon a lot. Uh, we don't want him to have to work that much. And at the beginning of the season, he wasn't. So mm-hmm. um, this is a period where we've needed him to step up. He has, uh, and that's why he was a goalkeeper of the year last year and you know why he's uh, carrying so much of the weight again this year. I remember Mark saying going into this year that we wanted to possess the ball a little more. Uh, we wanted to, instead of constantly be, or not constantly, but be going on more counters, but to possess the ball a little bit more. Do you feel like we've we've been doing that recently? We just haven't been able to connect on that on that attacking end to get those goals. Do you feel like that's been um, a successful change and transition for you guys this year? Yeah, the numbers have shown yeah. a higher possession rate. Possession doesn't, in and of itself, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that's a good thing. Um, but the intent is to move teams, to unbalance teams. And to break them down, and certainly the first um, quarter of the season we were doing that. The last quarter of the season, it's been a little tougher, and I think part of that, you know, there's it's a very complex thing. Yeah. Um, but I think 
we need to be brave. We need to continue to push guys forward, get good runs in the boxes. Again, one of the great things that Russell does is he's always looking to get behind the defense to sniff out, uh, you know, the ball in the in the 18 yard box. He doesn't wait for it to come to him. He goes and gets it, mm-hmm. and it just finds him because of that. So we need a little more proactivity, uh, you know, on the offensive end. And frankly, we need our defenders to put a goal in too. And nobody scored um, officially yet this year. I think Chibi had one against Monterey in preseason uh, in front of our fans. But other than that, we haven't had a defender score. Um, so everybody's got to step up on that end. Um, we've talked about it. It's it's something that uh, we know is going to be be um, be something that we take care of. And but it's you know everyone's aware of it. Yeah. What um what should we expect or what do you think maybe we won't see any real true changes or anything but going forward for the rest of the season what what do you think fans can expect to see um, on the pitch are we we're gonna see a little more of we're gonna see a little more Blake Willie we're gonna see a little more Chibi like you mentioned like what what can maybe fans poke their head in and see as we extend throughout the rest of the season yeah I mean I think the one thing you'll see at home you're gonna see a, a team that goes for it we're not gonna be a team that sits back and waits. Uh, for this to turn around, we're gonna we're gonna be aggressive and mm. go for it. So at home, that's that's something that we've been so good at over the years, and um, you know, just this year for some reason, it's that's kind of slipped out of our DNA a little bit. So that's there's a big emphasis on that. So that's big. I think our young players, you'll continue to see them, um, and you know, even Davion getting on yeah. uh, against North Carolina recently, this close to scoring a goal uh, today in training. He's he's lights out. Um, he is. Uh, he has been fantastic, as all of our young players have. Chibi um, could start in this league for any team, and uh, he continues to learn from those guys, challenge those guys, um, and you'll see more of him and, and Blake too. Blake is uh, very confident, lefty in the midfield, um, and is getting more and more confident every single day. It helps too now that uh, the academy season is is over. They're strictly with the first mm-hmm. team right now. They're focused solely on this. Davion's been going back and forth with Mexico, with the U.S. national team, um, you know, and has kind of been pulled in different directions. All good things, but it's a lot on him, and now we've got him in a stable sort of rhythm of, of training, and that that's going to help anyone. Yeah. Um, can I ask you some some presidential questions? Not not about Republic presidential questions, <laughs> to, to be clear. <laughs> We're going into politics now? No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, of course, of course. Let's go. Um, how, do you, how, how do you evaluate the business where we're at? We're 11 years in now. Um, we're obviously moving into a new office, moving downtown with the, with the team store downstairs. Um, how do you evaluate where we're at in mid season for this year? How do you, how do you kind of take all that in as, as this season has come through so far? Yeah, very good. I think, um, as a business, as a club, it continues to grow and we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Our fans have only gotten bigger and louder over time. Um, and they, have shown up in record numbers the first half of the season. We expect that to increase even more in the second half of the season. Um, and that's usually how it works with us. Uh, but it's great because we feel that support. We feel that love from the community. We always, we always do our fans are the tower bridge battalion has been fantastic this year. Can't say enough about them. They've been so good, um, you know, to work with and to, you know, to see them cheer on the team. It's been great. Um, and then the big picture for us, there's no question. We were, you know, we're now our, our front office is downtown. We're looking at the rail yards. That's where we ultimately want to be. We want a new stadium. Uh, that is the next step, the next evolution for our club. Uh, and we're working hard to make that a reality. Uh, MLS fantasy. Can we, can we dive in. I'm struggling. Yep. You've gotten away with a lot this year. I have. Yeah. You've, uh, I've run into some bad teams. Yeah. You kind of, your matchups have worked out for you. Yeah. And teams, like you bring the worst out of your opponent, which is amazing. Like it's an amazing. That's a, great, right? Like yeah. you, hard like to people play, play hard terrible to play. against you. Yeah. yeah. So, that's, but I do. That's I a did credit beat, to you. I did beat you head to head this year. You did. You did. But I'm behind you in the standings. Significantly. Significantly behind. But you did win that week. So that's you know. Well, you, and I think you were top scorer that week. I think I was. I had to be. Yeah. But we got to mention Jake, who probably people listening to this don't know. One of our newer competitors in MLS Fantasy League. Yeah. Has I, not a soccer guy to be clear. <laughs> he's came from NHL San Jose Sharks, hot big time hockey guy. Well, I don't know if he's big time. He played from hockey. Yeah. Um, I don't know league. how he does it. I, 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 I really can't don't. figure it out. I think he's in the blogs. He might be in the dark web, like figuring this stuff out. But he has an insider some somehow. Well, uh, that's been my theory. Is somehow you like I think you're you have insiders as well. 
And he's out inside and you're inside. The, I just know the game, Connor. I just know the game. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you don't make a call. Hey, is this guy going to play this week? No? No. No. There's no There's no trickery happening no. here. All right. I, I just, I'm just think... an astute follower of the game. I just don't know how he's been so good. No, it's a good question. And maybe we should have him in here to, to answer question that. Question him? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a problem for me. I, I can't figure out. He's year one. Did you beat him? Did you play him yet? No, no, I haven't played him yet. I think he beat Undomitable. Yes, he beat Ben Cam. Ben Cam. Yeah. Have you played him? Um, yes, I beat him. Yeah. Because been... he was he won the first couple of weeks. He was the top scorer. Yeah. And well, I you and him right have, after that. You and him have been the top scorer. I think like, I've I think I've you're, got him you're, now. What you're seven? Yeah. I have. We'll have to check it out. One week, and it was the week I beat. <laughs> <laughs> I show up. It big, counts. Big competitors. Well, Connor Gorey had it this week and yeah. made sure he brought the trophy over. Yeah. Well, I'm bringing back my tank strategy for the playoffs. Tank to... Well, you're doing a great job. <laughs> you are spot on with it. Tank tank until you find the right side. Get get on the right side of the bracket. You're in line for like number eight, though. You're right in the eight seed I I zone. Can, That's I, not a good zone. Well, to I have in. to either move to six or I have to stay at eight to avoid you on that side of the bracket. This is what I tried to do last year. I didn't tank enough. You don't want to be eight. Yeah, because then I play Jake, and I'm on the opposite you, side of the Jake's bracket. Jake's not in first. Who's in first? I thought he was Who's in Eddie. first? No. Oh, wow. Come on. I got to reevaluate. Yeah. Now I got to come up to seven. It didn't work for you last year either. No, that's because I didn't take enough. I needed to take earlier. So I've been... Uh, yeah, it's, hmm. that's the plan. Everybody's tuned out by now, yeah, by no, the way. Well, this is... <laughs> I know. We're in the weeds. Um, but I'm excited about the new office. This is fantastic. Well, I don't know if this will be the set week, but it's. But I'm fired up. Thanks for sitting down with us mid-season. Yeah. Um, and you're going to Oakland this weekend? I'll be there. I'll be there. It'll be fun. Yeah. Big game. I mean, not just for rivalry reasons, but also, you know, in the standings. They're, they're right behind us. Um, yeah. Tied on points, but um, it's a big it's a big one. The league couldn't have picked a better one for this. Good for them. Good on good on them. I don't know if they picked it intentionally. I mean, obviously they picked it intentionally, but um, but it also worked out for where we're at in the standings. A lot of storylines, a lot of pieces to it. So should be fun. I'm fired up Sunday at 1 p.m. on CBS, and then we got a lot of other national TV games coming up too. It's a lot of, lot of good stuff. No, it's great. I mean, I think the league uh, has been great to us. We're, we're featured more than any other team on the national TV mm-hmm. window, and obviously our games here on Fox 40 have been uh, – tremendous so our partnership with them continues to get better and better and um you know people people are appreciating that yeah no doubt and i think people are knowing that the games are there now in year three and that's helped as well so i'm excited uh big game sunday thanks for sitting down in the in the new office the new set we'll see if it stays the same but i'm coming after the ratings tank from this one uh you're gonna have to change everything that's gonna be a problem all right thanks todd appreciate it thank you